Hello, friends and fellow seekers. Welcome back to the Law of One Spiritual Advice Podcast. My name is L. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy my service and attempting to communicate these types of things, could you please give the video a like? It really helps with getting the information out there to others. I appreciate it. So today, we're going to talk about the difference between being truthful and being nice, <laughs> because we are trying to work with the open heart and trying to be open-hearted, compassionate, loving individuals. And sometimes that can be misinterpreted as, you know, open-hearted compassion is just being nice all the time, right? It's just, you never want to upset anybody. You wouldn't want to trigger anyone, right? You would just want to be nice to them because isn't that, isn't that a virtue, being nice? <laughs> well, my friends, it is not particularly the best thing. Like, yes, of course, being nice is appropriate and you should try to be nice as often as possible. But sometimes what we do is in our attempt to be nice, we withhold the truth from other people. We don't really mirror back what we should to them because we're afraid of upsetting them. And in my opinion, that's not particularly nice. And that is not truthful. That is, as they mention in some of these quotes that I'll read you, is putting admiration over discrimination. In other words, you admire the person too much to give them true feedback, and instead it stifles your ability to discriminate or to judge. And like maybe discrimination and judge seem to be words that have bad connotations with them, but they're not. Like we need to judge the light from the dark, do we not? And and that is what we're going to talk about today. And so let's just begin with a quote from the raw material, the law of one, uh, which is what inspired today's podcast. Raw mentions, the entity which is given constant and unremitting approval by those surrounding it suffers from the loss of the mirroring effect of those which reflect truthfully rather than unquestioningly. This is not a suggestion to reinstate judgment, but merely a suggestion for all those supporting instruments, that is, support be harmonious, share in love, joy, and thanksgiving, but find love within truth. For each instrument benefits from this support more than the total admiration which overcomes discrimination. End of quote from session 101.8. And so I often think about this quote in the world that we live in right now because I feel like the world and society have has gotten to this point in its development where it does understand a little bit about the heart and about being compassionate and nice towards others, towards the planet, etc., but I feel that it's overbalanced in that it's trying to convince you that being nice or sort of withholding the truth because it might upset somebody is a virtue. And I don't think that's a virtue. There's this other philosopher guy that I listen to. He talks about a rabbit. A rabbit is fairly harmless, right? So does that mean that a rabbit is virtuous because it's harmless and it doesn't really hurt anything? No, it's not. Like, what is... What is truly virtuous is, let's say, for example, in another analogy, that you have a sword, right? You have the sword of truth. And so what is truly virtuous is that when you do not use the sword, right? You have the ability to judge and discriminate and to possibly share a deep truth which might offend someone or hurt someone, but you choose not to. Like, in my opinion, that is what is virtuous, is you have the sword and you choose not to use it, versus just you not knowing anything and just being a super nice person and aren't really truthful or reflecting truths to others and mirroring things back to them as would be more appropriate for you know, your development and their development. So when you're attempting to converse with people and you're obviously attempting to serve one another and serve yourself and be a good human being, you would want to reflect truthfully rather than unquestioningly, which is a tough word to, to say out loud, unquestioningly, <laughs> right? So you would like to rather reflect the truth to people instead of just admiring them. Like, you know, I suppose this probably happens with celebrities and famous people a lot. They're constantly surrounded by yes men, as it's called, right? So then that unfortunately what happens then with people like that is they don't get any truth reflected back to them. They're just left with a bunch of people who clap and applaud every time that person does anything. They're just like, oh, wow, yes, you're awesome, famous celebrity. I love you so much. There's nothing that you could do is wrong. When clearly there is some judgments that 
those people could make and share it with the other, but they are afraid of offending the other person, and so they choose not to share those things with that other person. And this even goes back to like way back in the day when they had kings and queens, right? They always used to say that the only person that could really criticize the king was the jester. The jester would come in and make jokes and fun, and he'd be able to make fun of the king and and make fun of some of his shortcomings <laughs> but he would do it in in a way of humor and and then that was allowed i suppose so you know we can even learn from from that idea in that you can be truthful and you can be nice and you could even you know do it in like a more humor type way or whatever but your delivery of your mirroring back to other people and attempts to serving them and attempts to helping them become better people uh, can be it doesn't have to come with the harsh sort of truth and sort of cuts their reality in half and makes them go, oh my God, what's going on? Do I even know myself? I don't know what's going on. Like, or I can't believe that they would say something like that, right? We do have the ability to communicate with others in a kind manner. I like to just be honest with people, right? And you can just sort of have a, a few precluding sentences before you deliver a sort of harsh truth to somebody and you can say things like hey you know I used to be in your shoes before I used to do this and I used to get mad about this and and it used to really trigger me in certain ways and what I've noticed is that as I've learned so and so you know it's become easier for me to accept this and that and you know I just wanted to let you know that it seems that when I'm interacting with you I'm, I'm, I'm picking up on some of these same energies and these same ideas that you seem to be getting, you know, somewhat, let's say, triggered <laughs> in these areas. And, you know, here's my feedback, right? So if it can come from a loving, compassionate place and not just a finger pointing place, then people are a lot more open to receiving your criticisms, your judgments, your feedback. But often if you just come out and point your finger at them, go, ha ha, like you're operating from a paradigm of separateness, right? You need to be working with unity. Like, you're so silly. Like, I can't believe you do that, right? Well, that's not going to uh, have the other person be really open to listening to you. It's just going to close them off. And if anything, it's probably going to even be a disservice in that maybe it will push them further away from the truth rather than, you know, getting them a little bit closer, which is what you're hoping. And that is the ideal, is that we would like to deliver these messages to people in a nice way. However, I've been on this earth a number of years, <laughs> and I have dealt with certain people who there isn't really a particular nice way to say a certain thing, to deliver a certain truth to certain people. Um, they are very combative, and even when you try to do it in a cordial and kind way. They have a way of taking offense at everything you say and interpreting it in the worst type of light that they can in order to make you seem like a bad person. <laughs> okay, and, and that is possible, right? So no matter how good your intentions are, how soft and nice you attempt to deliver the truth to the other, they choose to be offended and triggered and they lash out at you. Well, and I would suggest that, you know, as long as you are at least attempting to do the nice thing and still something fairly seemingly bad has come of it, like a bad reaction from the other self, even that is okay okay, because that is still catalyst for their learning. You never know. That might even be what they need is somebody to point that harsh finger at them and really tell them the truth because nobody in their life has had the cojones to do the same themselves which is why I have my my difficulties with some people and other people appreciate me a lot because I'm fair and I try to reflect and be kind and, and try to come from a place of seeming non-judgment and some people really appreciate it. But then other people who I would suggest are sort of afraid of their shadow, they will lash out at you and sort of make themselves the victim and, you know, for convenience purposes for themselves so that they don't really have to own up to the judgments that you're giving them, which they probably feel are true as well, but they're just in that denial phase of the process. So even if things kind of go bad, it's not necessarily going to be the worst thing either, um, because even the most unhappy experiences shall shine the light upon, you know, the, the, the seeker of truth. So in session 80.15, Ra mentions something along these lines. They state, even the most unhappy of experiences, shall we say, which seem to occur in the catalyst of the adept, seen from the viewpoint of the spirit, may with discrimination possible in shadow 
be worked with until light equaling the light of the brightest noon descends upon the adept and positive or service to others illumination has occurred. End of quote. Right, so I'm sort of loosely applying this quote to the lessons that I'm trying to share today. It um, isn't exactly talking about the exact same thing about delivering truths and stuff like that. But it says here, right, even the most unhappy experiences which happen to a person or an adept or a seeker or whatever, seen from the viewpoint of spirit, so seen from like your higher self's perspective, from the perspective of unity that we are all one and that everyone has their free will and in good time they will use their free will to seek the truth it's just that some people are a little slower than others or more efficient than others maybe you would say so they state right if from the viewpoint of the spirit with discrimination possible and shadow be worked with until light equaling the light of the brightest noon descends upon the seeker and the positive or service to others illumination has occurred so as the shadow comes upon some people that you try to share truth with and it is kicked back at you and the person seems very mad and upset and is not particularly accepting the things that you would like to communicate to them that still might serve them in the long run right like it might not be any time immediately it could be in the future it could be years from now it could be in the next lifetime it's so tough to say but even the most unhappy experiences as they work with that in their shadow aspects and their shadow work and they try to integrate the things that you have said to them after they work past the denial phase of their process you know they'll they'll start to see that what you were saying was possibly true and that from your judgment of them you're just trying to help them that light may descend upon them and they may see the truth for the first time in a long time <laughs> like giving you an example and maybe i'm keeping it too vague like i had um and i used to live with a roommate who you know, they used to drink a lot of alcohol and then eventually over years and years, you know, we kind of considered him to be an alcoholic and to have actual problems with it where um, like when he would drink, he would forget things and then he would lash out when he was drinking, but then the next day forget everything. And, you know, like somebody like that, eventually you have to sit them down and, and just say, hey, right, you know, this is what I see. This is not acceptable. This is not how we are going to interact with one another. You know, I, I'm only telling you this not to make you feel bad, uh, not to make you feel like you're unworthy, like you are an infinitely worthy being. But, you know, the truth is the truth. You can't keep operating this way. If you would like to keep operating this way, you're going to have to go find somewhere else to operate this way. You're going to have to go live somewhere else <laughs> if you would like to keep doing that. But, right, I, we have patience and grace for your growth and for your opportunities to kind of put this alcohol type stuff aside, or at least if you are going to be indulging in it, um, creating some boundaries between us so that we aren't negatively affected based upon your free will choices and so you just have to sometimes lay those boundaries down and and although that person like in my scenario uh did end up right having to move on move along their own way and and leave being a roommate with me um i have to hope that in the future they might come around to seeing how i did that out of love i didn't do that to judge them i didn't do that in order to make them you know, seem like a crappy person and put myself on a pedestal as I'm so much better than you. I would never be like that. I, I hope that what happens is in the future, that person can come around and say, you know, I did kind of need that little soft kick in the butt to get moving, to get realizing that this isn't serving me and I need to make changes in my life. And, you know, you know, even, you know, even though I hated on that person at the time, and was very upset, you know, it must have been tough on them to have to try to deliver that truth to me, and I appreciate them attempting to do that. <laughs> That's at least what I hope happens, right? It may not always happen that way. The person, uh, I find that denial <laughs> of people's shadows can go on for many, many years, and they can continue to play the victim as they will and make you out to be the bad guy. Uh, but, right, the truth isn't always easy. Uh, the truth takes discrimination. It takes 
honesty and openness and sometimes you have to be vulnerable and sharing things about yourself and how you came to learn your lesson and how now you're seeing this same thing happen in the other person and you know it's from what you can tell from the truth that you feel you should share these lessons with the other person because it's what we are here to do is mirror back to ourselves and to others what we know and what we learn and 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 we shall coexist in that way so yeah, I think that that's what I really wanted to talk about today. Just the hard truth is not always compassionate, although it can be, right? It's more just what is compassion? And I, I don't I think that some people think compassion is just being nice, not causing a fuss. But in my opinion, the truth is compassionate. People need to know the truth. People need to learn about love and understanding and not just keep their head in the sand and be a crappy person and creating disharmony everywhere they go. I mean, they do have the free will to do that, but if they would like to be in my life, <laughs> then they will be hearing from me about the way that it affects me. And, you know, I will mirror back to them what I consider to be the truth. And I'll do it from a fair and honest and vulnerable perspective in hopes of attempting to serve the other self and you know sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't but I do believe my intentions are in a good place and I think that it in the overall of things is a good thing it's a it's a good thing both for the other person and for me because even as I attempt to serve other people and things are successful or unsuccessful I get to learn about the many infinite ways of perceiving things that are out there and I may get to learn a few things about myself and about the universe and about other people and so no matter what happens whether what I attempt to do serves the other person or not it still is learning for me and so that is my service to self check mark and my attempt to service to others check mark and you know there is only self and others we are all the creator there is really no difference and so then we are not ignoring any part of the creation we are taking part in it in full and what more can we do <laughs> so before i begin to ramble i think we'll just leave it there my friends if you appreciated this little short podcast today could you once again just hit the old like button that helps make sure you subscribe if you want to hear some more ramblings in the future on the law of one and philosophy and service to others and if you appreciate my attempts at this service feel free to jump on my patreon that really does help me do this in a long form fashion helps me to keep on on with doing this weekly helps me to know that there are people out there who care about this stuff and want me to keep doing it and so for those of you that do join I thank you so much you I really appreciate that there's random people out there who believe in what I'm doing and think that it's helpful and are willing to put their money where their mouth is it means the world to me I smile each month and each time that something pops up on my phone you know saying that someone's sort of made a contribution in that way so I thank you for exchanging value with me and also you can even just send a one-time paypal recurring paypal if that's uh, better than patreon for you so uh, thank you guys so much for listening i hope you have a wonderful rest of the week and take care love you bye